I was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. I was searching all the typical car websites, cars.com, eBay Motors, they were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles, no accidents, no damage, and good condition for only 3,500. This seems like a steal for such a reliable car with such low mileage. The seller lived about 10 miles from me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me that there were absolutely no problems with the car. He introduced himself as Bob. I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent sized property, only because it was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I walked over to see if anybody was inside, but except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked on the front door. I knocked for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number and I heard the sound of a cell phone ringing from inside the house. I was extremely confused at this point. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why, if he was home, why he wasn't answering. I decided I had to take a peek through one of the windows to see if anybody was inside. Peering through the glass, I couldn't really see much as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old fashioned dining room set. But across from that, I saw somebody standing at the back door of the house, staring outside. I figured that must have been Bob, so I knocked on the window, but he didn't even move. There was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard, since this wasn't a rural area. I simply walked around the house to the backyard. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. When I got to the back door, I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door was a taxidermied human being. I ran straight back the way I came and back to my car. I looked up one last time before driving off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds bent open. Somebody was at that window watching me. You can probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. The whole situation still makes no sense. All the car parts. The fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being, the fact that there was no car there leads me to believe that whoever that man was wasn't planning on selling me anything, and that also leads to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless statue staring out that man's back door. Already have a horror story to tell. The house I moved into isn't anything impressive, it's just a house that's appropriate for one or two people. But I'd say right away, I started hearing weird sounds coming from inside the walls. I first heard it in the kitchen, and then in the bathroom, but on night three, I started hearing it in my bedroom. I was sure there was some kind of animal living in my walls, I just had to figure out how to get rid of it. The next morning, I didn't even have enough milk to fill the bowl of cereal. I couldn't believe I hadn't realized I needed more milk. In fact, I seemed to be eating up all of my food pretty fast. I woke up in the middle of that night to the sound of breathing. Not my breathing. It, it sounded just like the breathing of a person. I flipped the lamp on and it stopped. I chalked it up as my mind playing tricks on me after waking up. The next day was really hot, so I turned down the AC for the first time. I checked every single vent, and some of them weren't blowing any air, one of them being the vent right next to my bed. I peered through the vent with a flashlight. There wasn't even a duct behind the vent. It was just the inside of the wall. It seemed that whatever air duct was in there had been removed. Unfortunately, I didn't look into the air conditioning system while buying the house, so I didn't know about this. 
That night, I had to sleep in the heat with no AC, so I was up pretty late constantly rolling around and flipping the pillow over. Then I eventually started to hear the breathing again, but this time I was fully awake. I knew it was real this time. It was coming to my left. I looked to my left at the air vents. The sound was surely coming from in there. I grabbed the flashlight again and shined it in through the vent. I dropped it and screamed. There was someone's face peering through the cracks of the vents. The first thing I saw were their eyes, open wide and glowing. I screamed all the way down and out the house. I soon found out there was a crazy, dangerous homeless man living in my walls, and he had been eating my food ever since I moved in. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small, local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, probably 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in a gym at all. I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. I took my time finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. I'll skip most of the conversation, but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not without saying bye like three times though. That night I got a snap on my phone saying from Sean. I immediately sighed and said, oh no just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap, and the kid was in a creepy, weird pose, face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his hand and a half-smile on his face. The text over the picture was, hey, with two Y's. I muttered the words, what the fuck? For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. I'm gonna remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. I'm sure not even a minute later, again a message popped up on my phone, saying Snapchat from Sean. I waited a few minutes before opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed, no smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. The text over the image said, Why did you remove me? Now I went as far as to block him, meaning he couldn't snap me anymore. And that was that. I threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone goes off, saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. He actually made a new account. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. It was a picture of my front lawn. The text over it, answer me bitch. The first thing I could think of was, how did he find my address? Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends are. Somehow I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. It was the sound of taps on the window. Deep breath, and with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. Now I called 911. By the time they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. 
The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account, but anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again.